Before I start this particular video, let me give a brief introduction of myself. I am Babu Gunashekaran and I have secured All India Rank 337 in Civil Services Examination 2016. And before that, I also secured All India Rank 37 in Central Armed Police Forces Examination 2009. And then I briefly worked as assistant commandant for some time till 2014. And then subsequently I have quit my job. And from then I have been helping, mentoring, teaching students, preparing for the civil service. And I have also been associated with number of reputed institutions. And over a period of time, by discussing with the students, I have also been actively learning, understanding their problem. And out of which I have gained a lot of experience and insights as to how to prepare for this examination. And over a period of time, I have also specialized in the area of Indian polity and governance. So, the objective behind this video is to help the students who are preparing for the civil service, especially the beginners, as to how one has to start their preparation with regard to the Indian polity. In order to understand, the subject Indian polity. First of all, you'll have to understand as to what is the relevance of this particular subject. Now, see if you see the relevance of this particular subject, you can talk of a general relevance. When I say general relevance, whether you prepare for a civil service examination, whether you clear this examination or not, the knowledge of Indian polity is very important as a citizen of this particular country. Everybody should be aware of how. The government is constituted. Do they have the right to vote in the elections? And a number of other things, especially with regard to the political system of our country. So, these are all some of the basic things everybody should have. What are their fundamental rights? And what if the rights are violated? How they get it enforced? So, the basic idea of this subject is very very relevant everybody should have a basic idea now coming to the relevance with regard to the examination if you see the examination again it is very very relevant apart from the general relevance that we have seen it's very relevant for the examination because of the fact you can see the relevance of this examination one in the preliminary examination one in the prelims and then in the mains. Prelims, how it is relevant? On an average, if you see in the last five years, just taking the example of last five years, 80 questions has been asked in the preliminary examinations, which means approximately 15 to 16 questions has been asked every year in the preliminary examination. That means without this particular subject, no candidate would be ever be able to clear the preliminary examination which is why this is so important and then in the mains examination also if you see which is part of the GS paper too every year approximately questions come for 100 marks now this is not to be misled when I say 100 marks 100 marks from core polity I'm not including the governance part or the social justice part or the international relations part which is also part of the civil service examination. It is only from the core Indian polity. This is the average for the last 5 to 10 years. So, this subject is very, very important for both prelims as well as the mains examination. So, now the question is how to proceed with this particular subject. I am a beginner. I am yet to start the civil service preparation. What should I do? The good thing about this particular subject, the sources, the conventional sources are very, very limited. But of course, you cannot stop only with the conventional sources, but to begin with and to have a grip over the subject, you don't have to read multiple books. There are few standard books, if you read them, that will give a good hold of this particular subject. So now let us see as to what are the sources that one has to rely upon for preparing for the civil service. The sources are very limited. First, anyone who wanted to begin the preparation, I would suggest that the students have to go through this particular book. A very simple book, Indian Constitution at Work, which is the 11th class NCRT book. 
the eleventh class NCRT book, which gives a basic idea about a number of things about the Indian political system. It tells us about the framework under which the constitution was drafted and it gives basic idea about the fundamental rights, the duties of the citizens. It also gives basic ideas about the various institutions like the executive, legislature and the judiciary. So, these are all very basics for you to understand. It also gives a brief idea as to the kind of federal political system in our country, how there is division of powers between the center and the state government. So, all those basic ideas is must for you to further understand. So, one who is preparing for the civil service or who is aspiring to prepare should go through this particular book. It will not take much time, probably 5 to 7 days time is what is required to complete this particular book might vary a little from individual to individual it does not matter and then I will also suggest that once you are done with this particular book which gives a basic idea about the political system then you may also have to go through another book which is also again the 11th class NCRT book which is the political theories which is again the 11th class NCRT book. <coughs> But however, in this book, we are not going to, the book does not deal much with the political system as such, but the basic values that are embedded in the constitution, the values like freedom, the values like liberty, justice, equality, secularism, rights. So, all these things have been briefly explained, which will give a better idea to start with. So, I would strongly recommend the students to go through these two books which will give a lot of basic ideas to begin with this examination, which in my opinion will not take more than 10 to 15 days of time. If you put a substantial amount of time every day, which is not going to take definitely more than this, it can take a little less, little more depending upon the individual ability and the individual differences, the ability to comprehend things. So, you can also go for multiple reading of these books, maybe two times, three times before you start with your next level of preparation. So, once you are done with these two books, which is very essential in my opinion, then there are two important books. One is Indian Polity by M. Lakshmikanth, which is a very comprehensive book, specifically compiled for the civil services examination. And then there is also another book, which is Introduction to the Indian Constitution by D. D. Basu. But you will have to understand one thing. You will have to read either of these books. You cannot read both the books, that is not advisable. You can go with either Indian Polity, which is written by M. Lakshmikanth, or Introduction to the Constitution by D. D. Basu. But however, I would suggest M. Lakshmikanth is most popular because of its simplicity and also its broader coverage to the examination pattern. So, it is very popular among the students. So, you can go with M. Lakshmikanth also. But somebody feels I am comfortable with D.D. Basu, you can try D.D. Basu as well, but do not read both the books. Read the same book, but again and again. That is how you can succeed in this examination. So, what are the sources? The NCRT book 11, that is Indian Constitution at Work, Political Theories. Second is M. Lakshmikanth. So, that would give you a lot of conventional idea. You will have a basic idea of the Indian polity. So, coming to Lakshmikanth, students might ask that there are, if you see the latest edition of uh, Lakshmikanth, there are 79 chapters in this book. Do I have to read all these chapters? Probably you can go through these chapters once, but not all the 79 chapters are very important for the examination. I would say around these 79 chapters, probably around 50 to 55 chapters may be very important for the examination. So, as and when you proceed with the examination, you will also understand once you gradually get hold of the subject, you will also understand not each and every chapter is very important. Say for example, if you see these chapters, I can list down some of the chapters, say fundamental rights, parliament are very important. So, these two chapters may be important than the other chapters. So, you will have to identify these chapters which are very important and do multiple revisions of these chapters. And within the chapters, 
certain topics might be more important than the other topics. So, for example, fundamental rights itself is very important. But within fundamental rights, what is important? Article 19 and Article 21 is very, very important. So, every year there is a question coming in the mains examination from this particular topic. So, you will have to identify this. What are the important chapters in the first place? And within those chapters, what are more important than the other topics? Take Parliament as an example. Parliament as a chapter is very important. But within Parliament, there are certain things which is very, very important. So, for example, parliamentary committees, the role of the presiding officer, especially the role of speaker, the disqualification of the members of the parliament, the money bill. So, there are few topics, the parliamentary privileges. So, there are few topics within the parliament can be more important than the other topics. So, you will have to really focus upon those topics which is very, very important for the preparation. So, the idea is not that you will read the book from cover to cover. So, initially you will have an understanding, but then gradually realize what is important and then you spend more time on what is important for the examination. And apart from that, you may ask a question that how will I know that what is more relevant for the examination? And that is why you can take the help of the previous year questions. So, the previous year questions are really a guide for you to understand as to what is relevant for the examination. If you take the previous year questions, I would say for the preliminary examination, you can take 10 to 15 years of previous year questions. See what kind of questions is being asked repeatedly. What are the major areas where the questions are asked? And from there, you can prepare it. You will identify these things. And for the mains examination, yes, what are the important themes? Again, you can go for the last five years of previous year questions. From the five years of previous year questions, you will understand as to what are the important topics and then you focus on those topics. I can definitely tell you if you read these two books, that is the Indian Constitution at Work and the Indian Polity by M. Lakshmi Kant, you will be able to attend at least 80% of the questions that is coming in the preliminary examination. I cannot assure you 100%, nobody can assure you 100% because that is how the UPSC examination is. But as yes, 80% of the questions, or maybe a little more, you can get it right. I wanted to further improve my performance. You can still do that. And you have to do that because as I already said, this subject, Indian polity, is very, very contemporary in nature. Which means once you have the fundamental idea, you'll have to keep updated yourself with the contemporary issues, the current developments related to the constitution of India. So you'll have to keep yourself updated. And especially it becomes very, very important for your mains examination. For your mains examination, you cannot just rely upon these conventional sources. You will have to update yourself with more of the contemporary issues. So, what I have to do for preparing for my mains examination. So, now you have already seen for the prelims what is required. You read the two NCRT books. And then you read the Indian polity and Lakshmi Kant. And especially for the mains, you will have to update that with the contemporary issues. Not only for the mains, even it may help you to some extent in your preliminary examination as well. So, definitely this updation is required. So, what I have to do? I have to read at least two papers, if not from page to page, cover to cover. But at least selectively, the students have to update themselves with two papers two daily newspapers. One is The Hindu, which is still the most popular paper for the civil service. And then the second thing right now, which is also bringing with a lot of good articles relevant to the civil service examination is The Indian Express. But the students may be really puzzled what I should read in these newspapers will not be able to know what is relevant for the examination unless and until you know the syllabus of the civil service examination. So, it is very, very important students who wanted to prepare, they first understand and remember the syllabus that is given in the examination. Although there is no broad syllabus that is given for the preliminary examination, but yes, it is given for the mains examination. So, you have to first memorize and remember the syllabus that is given. So, what is very important? 
first you memorize the syllabus which is given in the notification for example the syllabus talks about federal issues the syllabus talks about the issues that is arising out of the federal political system in our country now just look into the newspaper for some time in the news that you might have also observed that many times this particular institution has been reported the institution of cbi the institution of cbi the institution of enforcement directorate now these are institutions which are controlled by the center and many times it has been reported in the newspaper that the central government is using these institutions like cbi and enforcement directorate to pressurize the state government or to pressurize especially the opposition parties in the state so this is a classic example of how a centralized institution is used to pressurize the state government whether the allegation is true or not but it becomes relevant for the examination because it is very much relevant to the federal political system so you'll have to follow such topics which becomes very relevant for your examination other example take the topic of governor the governor topic has become so controversial these days even today there was a news in the hindu that the state government of tamil nadu and the legislative assembly of tamil nadu has passed a resolution against the governor to give approval to the bills that is pending against him in a time bound manner so the role of governor becomes very very important because the governor acts as a link between the center and the states so his position and his constitutional functions are also very much relevant to the federal political system so governor becomes very relevant for your examination i'm just trying to make you understand how you have to read these things the syllabus also talks about the constitutional bodies recently there was a judgment that was given by the supreme court with regard to appointment in the election commission of india so such judgments by the supreme court becomes very relevant for your examination the syllabus talks about fundamental rights so any judgment which is given by the supreme court with regard to the fundamental rights you will have to follow it up any new developments the syllabus talks about the judicial system there's a lot of news that is coming with regard to the collegium system of appointment so such developments become very important the syllabus talks about the representation of people act 1951 and recently mr rahul gandhi was disqualified to be a member of parliament under the representation of people act 1951 so such news become very important so how i should prepare the newspaper the question is very simple that first you should understand what is there in the syllabus and once you know what is there in the syllabus you know what to read in the paper this is not only for indian polity but maybe to some extent for the other subjects as well so in hindu what i will read so whatever comes in the front page which is relevant to your syllabus is very important then probably you can go to the national news and then the important editorials relevant to your syllabus so all those things becomes very relevant for your examination and then in indian express the important editorials the explained column in indian express relevant to your syllabus all these things has to be followed by the students so if you read the ncert books if you complete the indian polity selectively over a period of time and then if you also update yourself from the hindu and the indian express selectively which is relevant to your syllabus which you have to do it for a year so you'll have to do it for a year and if you update yourself one year before the examination i'm very sure that you can get 90% of the questions right in your preliminary examination this is minimum and i'm also very sure that you can get 50 to 60% of the marks because upsc doesn't give you a uh, very liberal marking but i can say that you can get 50 to 60% of your marks from indian polity so this is the way that you'll have to prepare for the examination now okay i keep preparing preparing alone will not help you to succeed in this examination there's a need for constant evaluation of yourself constant evaluation of your knowledge whether your knowledge can be applied properly or not can you express your knowledge whatever you have gained so it requires a constant evaluation which means you will have to 
periodically revise and you'll have to periodically solve the previous year questions. As I already said, the reference point can be the last 10 to 15 years of question paper. Revise them topic wise. And if you commit mistake, try to understand where you have committed the mistakes. Try to rectify them. And you can also try writing some of the questions, answers from the previous year mains examination. So in this way, you can really build and strengthen your preparation over a period of time. Now the next important question is sometimes the students are puzzled is that the approach to the preliminary examination and the mains examination are they different or is it the same? Do you have to study separately for the preliminary examination and a separate approach for the mains examination? I would say you can never prepare separately for a preliminary examination or a mains examination or for that matter anybody who has cleared this examination, any serious aspirant would know that it has to be an integrated approach. You cannot study it separately. Ideally, I would say that any serious aspirant who wanted to prepare for the examination should start their preparation one year before the examination. This one year time is required for them to cover all the syllabus. So before the examination process, before you are near the preliminary examination, it has to be an integrated approach because the syllabus is not separate for the preliminary examination and the mains examination. There's a lot of overlap, in fact, completely overlap. So how can we have a separate approach for the prelims and the separate approach for the mains? It has to be an integrated preparation. But however, before your preliminary examination, your approach has to be prelim specific. And before your mains examination, your approach has to be main specific. So is it confusing that on the one hand, I'm saying it should be an integrated approach, then before the prelims, the prelim specific approach. And after the prelims, once you go for the mains, it has to be main specific approach. So what is this? So let me just explain with a simple example. Take the governor. Suppose you'll have to prepare on this particular topic, governor. Before your preliminary examination, what and how you will deal with the governor? The constitution says that the governor is the constitutional head of the state. The governor is appointed by the president and the governor can be removed during the pleasure of the president or he holds office during the pleasure of the president. And normally the governor has to act in accordance with the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers, except in those areas where he can act in his discretion. The governor has to give the assent to the bills if it is recommended by the Council of Ministers and the bill becomes an act only if he gives the assent. So these are all some things which is mentioned in the constitution which may be prelim specific. So when you read the topic governor, this is how your focus has to be. But however, when you come to the mains examination, let us see. In the mains examination, these things may not be completely relevant. They are not going to ask you the factual provisions in the constitution, but probably what can be asked in the mains examination is, is the office of the governor Is the office of the governor relevant in the present circumstances? So see the approach that you have to take. While in the preliminary examinations, they were asking more of the factual things which is related to the governor, which is directly there in the constitution. But for the mains examination, it is going to be more analytical. There's no, nothing which is mentioned in the constitution to understand is the office of the governor relevant. So for the mains examination, it is going to be more analytical. So you'll have to understand the contemporary issues. You will have to have an idea as to what is the background and the kind of debates that happened in the constituent assembly that necessitated the constituent assembly to provide for the office of the governor and what are the present issues that is happening in our country and what are the various issues because of the office of the governor is happening between the center and the state and some contemporary examples for that. So all these things would be part of your mains examination. So I would say that you should prepare all these things holistically but before the prelims it has to be a prelim specific approach. 
and before the mains it has to be a main specific approach and only if you prepare like this you would be able to do well in the examination so just to summarize whatever we have discussed so first we have seen that how relevant is this particular subject indian polity and governance very relevant indian polity and the second thing we also seen the sources which is important the sources are restricted the conventional sources on top of that you have to keep yourself updated with the contemporary issues and all those things and then the periodic revision is very much important and then you also take a little bit of different approach only at the time of the prelims and the mains examination but otherwise it is going to be a holistic preparation that will help you to do well in the examination i hope this video helps especially the beginners who wanted to prepare for the civil service examination and the subject indian polity so before i wind up let me make a small announcement now keeping in mind the civil services preliminary examination which is approaching that is 2023 preliminary examination so we have decided to launch the 100 most probable questions which may be asked in the preliminary examination for the subject indian polity so to get an update on those important questions you may subscribe to the study iq english channel i hope this video helped everyone god bless thank you very much